Jonah. Jonah. A rebellion. Rebellion. Regurgitated. Reluctant. Resentful. Rebel. Regurgitated. Interesting word. Reluctant. Resentful. Chapter 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. So God saw this man to give him a message. This Jewish man, that's important, to a Gentile nation, that's more important, that the Gentiles were hated by the Jews, resentful. And Jonah is called that this wicked city and cry against it. Now Jonah's attitude, which we would see later, but what we would see now as far as the Gentiles would be at, as the place of the Jews, let it be destroyed. Because we're the Jews, we're the number one, we're the only ones to be, we're the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But Jonah, verse 3, okay, but Jonah, pay attention to the word but in the Bible, because it's very important. When that word but shows up, it's changing the whole characteristic of what you just read. God says, go to Nineveh, cry against it. But Jonah rose up. He went, all right, glory to God. He rose up to flee. Well, the word flee is not a verb for the, uh, the work of going to Nineveh. To hmm. flee is to run against. Cry unto Nineveh against it. Get in there and preach a hard hellfire message. Because they're wicked. And Jonah got up. That's what the church does. To flee. And that's what many of the church does today. They, they, they get up and do all kinds of other things. They, they, they have other kinds of things. The Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel. Go to Nineveh. Preach to them. But Jonah flee. The, the Christian today, they flee. He fled to Tarshish. And the Christian flees to programs and face painting and fellowships and uh, uh, turning the altar to a stage. And we got a skit and we got this and we got... The church is doing what, what Jonah did. He fled. Now he fled. He fled to Tarshish. Tarshish is the complete opposite direction of Nineveh. So Jonah is going to flee as far as east is known to the known world because Tarshish is believed to be Spain. And if you're in Spain and look at a e European map, because America really wasn't known, but it was, you're at the Atlantic Ocean. There is no further east that Jonah could have gone. Jonah is going as far as he can to, to dip his foot into the Atlantic Ocean. Rather than go where God wants him to go, he's in rebellion. He fled from the presence of the Lord and went. So, all right, to flee, 
Tarshish, presence of the Lord. We see that Jonah is a rebellion. How do we know that? Look at verse 10. Then were the men exceedingly free and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Jonah admitted, God wanted me to do one thing, I did another. Christian, you better repent of that before you find out the judgment seat of Christ and have a loss. So that's rebellion. And every Christian has that rebellion in it. Even I, I, I size people at, up at times. Many times. And I ought not. So, chapter 2, Jonah. Jonah prayed. Because we read in chapter 1, verse 17, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish, Jesus says, well, to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Jonah's not in a cavity. He's not... In a chamber. He's not in a gland. He's nowhere no, near the nasal. He's in the belly. He's in the belly. He's in the belly. You don't you know your English? Of the of the big fish, giant fish, the great fish, the whale, Jesus says. He's dead. I don't care what, what you care. I don't care what the, the Hebrew says. I don't care what the scholar says. He's in the belly of the whale, and he's dead. No nasal cavity. I, I, I've seen these programs. They come on, and they, they show you the picture of the fish and the, 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 the whale cavity and all that. And, you know, you could leave, live there because there was oxygen. Jonah had no oxygen. He was dead. D E A D. If anybody teaches you otherwise, they're lying because this is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ that Jesus says, and Jesus died. And it's a type of Jonah died and was resurrected. And Jonah didn't die. Jesus didn't die. Then there is no gospel, and the Bible's a lie. Now, if you teach that Jonah didn't die, you're the liar. L-I-A-R. Verse chapter 2, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fishes. Bell E. Bell E. Not cavity. Isn't the English great? So... We learn that Jonah dies, is, is, goes to hell, and prays to God. We learn that the rich man in hell talks. There are people in hell. They're praying. They're talking. They're screaming. They're crying out. It said, I cried by the reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly, not cavity, of H-E-L-L, -L, not Gehenna, not Hades, out of hell cried I, Jonah died and went to hell. Now here's my voice. That's interesting. For has cast me into the deep. They threw him overboard. In the midst of the seas, in the flood seas, Mediterranean seas, and the floods can pass me about, and the billows and the waves passed over me. I said, I am cast out of thy sight, and now I will look I will look again toward the holy temple. The words can pass me about even to the soul, S-O-U-L, 
and the depth closed round about me, and the weaves wrapped around my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains, to the earth with her bars. Go to the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea. There's no bars. There are bars in hell. Forever! It has brought me up my life in corruption. Is he's beginning to run? He's in the belly of the whale, and the, and the juices of the acid of the whale has already worked on his body to begin corrupting, rotting. Oh Lord, my God, my soul fainted within me. My soul fainted within me. I remember the Lord, and my prayer came unto Thee into Thy holy temple. Verse 10, and the Lord spake unto the fish, a fish, and it vomited Jonah out on dry land. We got the regurgitated Jonah. We got the rebellion jo Jonah. He goes the complete opposite way. God prepares a great fish for him. Jesus says it's the whale. He dies. He goes into hell. And God says to the whale, that, that man that you swallowed, Put that boy over there in the land. And the great fish swims over there to the land. And, <coughs> and one big human ball. Fur ball is a cat. A human ball is a whale. And vomits. Regurgitated. God's prophet. On the dry land. That's interesting. And the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Rise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it, the preaching and bid thee. So Jonah rose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was a seemingly great city of a three-day journey. And Jonah began to enter the city a day's journey and cried, Here's the message. Eight words. Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That's an eight-word message. Short message. Jesus, I, I mean, Peter, I believe, he, Lord, save me as he's sinking. Lord, heal me. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Those are short prayers. That God hears. Verse 5 So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed the fast, and put on sackcloth, and the greatest of them to even the least of them. So the people repent. The glory to God of Jonah. Verse 4 But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. The reluctant J Jonah. I'm in Daytona Beach, Florida, because of my health, I can't. But I used to used to go out in the street and I used to preach on the streets every Saturday that I could. It would be uh, four to five hours of preaching. He had a Daytona 500. We would go and preach and get gospel tracks out six hours. We would get a sunburn, not for watching automobiles go round and round and round, but for getting the gospel out, for preaching the gospel. We would be for five to six hours at the at the uh, race route, race uh, week with the bikers. And we would rejoice when somebody appreciate. We would rejoice when we find somebody who was saved. I don't know personally if anybody got saved from those ministries right then and there. I don't know. I heard one time that someone told me and thanked me very much for, for their brother getting saved. I said, what are you talking about? And I was in the, the ministry at the, at the jail, and evidently one of the men got saved. I didn't know. 
and he had contacted his his, his uh, uh, family and told us, hey, listen, I went to this, this preacher, this, this preacher gave the name, gave the lesson, and I got saved. And it was me that was preaching, and I knew the, the, the family member, and she got a hold of me. She says, I'm glad for what? She goes, my brother got saved. I said, amen. And found out it was my preaching. These people, they repent, they get right. The entire city, including the king, get saved. And we have a reluctant Jonah. He's angry. And look what he says about God. And he prayed on the Lord again. He prayed to the Lord out of the well. He didn't pray to God when he got on the ship to Tarshish. He prayed to the Lord out of the fish. Because he was in trouble. He prayed in the Lord. Now look at this one. I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country, when he was in Israel? Therefore, I, before I fled unto Tarsus. This is what Jonah told God before he got on the ship. I knew that our gracious God, merciful, slow to anger, and great kindness, repentance thee of evil. So look what he said about God before he got on that boat. And he says, you know, if I go to this wicked Gentile city and I go preach, I know what you're going to do, God. They're going to repent and you're going to forgive them. So the aspect of my life would be I got on that boat and I go as far as east as I could to get away from that city. That's remarkable. Jonah had already perceived that this city would get right. And he went the other way. And the Christians today are told to preach the gospel. But they run to Matthew. Matthew is a Jewish book. It's not right, written to the Gentiles. I'm trying to get to the page. It's not written to the church. But they will run to Matthew 28. In verse 9. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the God. They won't run to Mark 16. Go to all the world and preach the gospel. They run to Matthew 28, 19. Because Matthew has no preaching. Teach. Be nice little goobers. Don't jam it down their throat. Don't be a hellfire preacher. Don't be a pointer preacher. Preacher, But Mark says to the disciples who are going out, preach the gospel. And John says, I know God. The gracious, merciful Slow to anger, kindness, repentance of the evil. Therefore, the reason why I went to Tarsus is because of that. And I knew exactly what you would do. That city got right at eight words preaching. And I am angry because that city repented. And you're forgiving them. I expected that city to burn. I expect that city to, to be tormented with tornadoes. I expected a volcano to show up. I expected trauma. And I'm looking at that city. They're all in sackcloth. They, they are fasting, including the animals. And they are praying. They are seeking Jehovah God of Israel. And Jonah Jonah is angry, reluctant. Even now he's reluctant because we learned that, that he told the men on the boat he's guilty. And we're learning now he didn't want to do it. And when he finally left the vomit 
that he was on the, on the on the beach or wherever he, the, the the fish vomiting him out, and the fear of God that God would do something else to him. He re reluctantly went to Nineveh on the good cause of who God is. And there are Christians who will reluctantly, for other reasons, will join the choir to go pass out gospel tracts, to go knock on the door, to get in some specific opening or ministry or office or position in the church or they may not even be a Christian because they want something else or they fear the wrath of God or I can get a, a girlfriend who's a wonderful girl or I can get a boyfriend, he's a wonderful guy. If I can get in this position, I can eliminate the, the preacher or the, the, whoever to get what I want. You're nothing better than Jonah. And Jonah did not get what he wanted. And he's angry. In this position, if you do not get what you want, you'll be angry. How can you be angry at an entire city that got saved? It's it, it, the city of Daytona Beach, and the mayor contacted me and said, Amen, glory to God, we're going to listen, we're going to hear God, we're going to... I'd be, pre I'd be pleased. Jonah's upset. And you could have something great happen in your church, the work of God. And somebody will be resentful. Here we are resentful. Because they didn't get what they wanted. Jonah wanted the wrath of God. I, I don't know what I don't know what a Christian or a non-Christian would want. That when God comes up with a blessing, when God comes up with mercy and kindness, that a saved man. Or a lost man, that it would be written, it displeased, put, your, put the name in there, exceedingly, he was very angry. And then he would pray something, a prayer, God, I know you're wonderful, I know you're great and gracious, and like that, but. Now therefore, Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it be better for me to die than to live. Just take my life. And it's not take my life and let it be. It just, I didn't get what I wanted. Now, Lord, kill me. Now, I'm not talking about a Christian who is depressed. Or a Christian that has become a widowed. Or a Christian, you know, it's just they're going through a, a valley in their life. I'm talking about a Christian, or I'm talking about a lost man who has done something or did not do something. And that when they finally did something, the action of God countered the reaction they wanted. God saved Nineveh. That's not what Jonah wants. God 
God blessed that office, but you didn't get what you wanted out of that office. God blessed that person, and you didn't like that person. God gave this man or woman into this classroom and you didn't get that classroom. God recognized that person, but they didn't recognize you. You can rebellion, regurgitate it, Reluctant and resentful. And the end and the last words of Jonah in his book, chapter 4, verse 9. And God said unto Jonah, Doest thou well to be angry for the gourd? He said, I do well to be angry even unto death. That's remarkable work. It's not worth to end your life. I don't care what you say, God. I don't care. From this day forward, I am angry. And it records in the beginning of chapter 4, I am exceedingly angry. I am very angry. And I will do well to be angry even unto my death. That will be the root that has already begun from chapter 1 of bitterness. You know why Job is where he is in chapter 4? Because he was angry in chapter 1. Chapter 1, chapter 2, how dare I get... How dare God send that whale? How dare God do that against me? And in chapter 3, I have to, or God's going to do something. And in chapter 4, bitterness. And in the end run, for the rest of my life, I will do well to be angry. And there's no pity. He had pity in a gourd. Not little children. He ends in verse 11. Little children who don't even know how to count their fingers yet. Were saved. Jonah was like, I'd do well to be angry. Why didn't you destroy him? I didn't get to play the piano in church. <sighs> I'm leaving this church. I'm not giving, I'm not saying a biblical reason. Listen, I've been in many churches and biblically sound reason to leave that church. One church, like a couple churches, were just absolutely carnal. And there was no growth at all. There were churches, to, they, were, they were changing the King James Bible. They were a King James Bible believing church, but they changed it. Because of my zeal for evangelism and what is right with God and the Word of God, one church said, You'd be better go somewhere else. I called one church out on the VBS as the decorations were ridiculous. The, and the preacher texted me and says, you don't need to come back here no more. I was at a church one time. The music was, you know, popping the CD. I think they call that the bar karaoke. And the lyrics are so loud, you came out of there with a headache. Three quarters of the message or the, the, the time was music and then it was one quarter message.
three quarters of an hour music, one quarter of an hour message. I can go on, but Jonah's anger began in chapter one. How dare you think about those Gentiles? And I'm leaving. I'm going opposite what God says. And God prepared the great fish. And God may prepare for the person pitfalls and barriers. Whatever needs to be to get that person saved or lost their attention. And they keep going. And they get into extreme trouble. Jonah, he's in the belly of the whale and he's dead. Now today, if you die, you ain't coming back to life to do it again. If you die, and you die in your sins, there is no coming back. Whether you are present with the Lord, you're saved, or you're in hell in the absence of God. You don't come back and do it again. You get a chance. Jonah is a literal picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, the three days and three nights, death and resurrection. But God may put pitfalls and troubles in a lost man or a saved man's life and they get stopped. They get hindered. They get in trouble. They get into the valley. And God gives them a way out and they're able to come out and they go get into what God wanted to do but they do it reluctantly. And then the reluctance of doing something that God wants you to do, chapter 3. You are now in chapter 4 in bitterness. See, Job did not really want to do going to Nineveh, chapter 3. Look at chapter 4. He didn't want to do it. And you see the outside, but you don't see the inside of a person. There may be somebody in your church, it could be your pastor, I don't know. But they could be doing what they're doing. And they don't want to do it. And they're in anger and bitterness. But if they feel they don't do what they're doing, God is going to whatever they're like. Whatever. What if Jonah did not go to Nineveh in chapter 3? I believe God would have done something to Jonah that he would have died, gone to hell, and he would never came out of. Now Jonah pictures the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus was never bitterness or anger, except for rightful. Paul says, be angry and sin not. You can be you can be angry and not sin. Jesus was angry at times without sin. Jonah is in anger, and the anger turns to reluctance. And it turns to bitterness. You see, Jonah refused. But he then evidently went. And yet still he obeyed what God told him to do. 
but he ended up regretful. Now, if you are a Christian and you do things or try things God has you to do with the best of your ability, now you may regret, you know what? It didn't be the fullest that you could have given, okay? But still you did it because you wanted to do it and he loved God to do it. And there's no regret. But if you do something because you have to do it, and you don't do it from the heart, you have now come to a life of bitterness. You need to repent and get right. You need not to even get on that road. If you're at a point that God wants you to do something and, and you're going to fight God, get on your knees right then and there. If you are or want to be involved in something, pray to God to put you in it. Pray to God that he will open that door for whatever you have. Don't go trying to knock your own doors down. 